So Philip uh, apparently lives to demo technology, according to the bio, which is uh, which is a wonderful way to live, I think. And he's going to be talking about uh, an exciting new development from the world of Elastic, which is reciprocal rank fusion. Philip. Thank you. Um, so I hope this is easier than the debate. Um, or let's see how the questions turn out at the end. Um, so reciprocal rank fusion. Um, and as a non-native speaker, I always struggle to pronounce the, the RRF because how I always feel like when I say that um, is um, pretty much like this. There's like the RRF um, that's coming out. So excuse me if I do not pronounce it very clearly, uh, but that's the feeling that I get from that. So who knows what RRF is or does? Well, that was a short talk. Um, no, since not everybody raised their hand, I think we can uh, dive a little deeper. Um, those who already know, um, I hope I'm not boring you too much. Uh, let's see. So we've done the introduction, so I'll skip over that. So the, the general problem that we have is um, we have, let's assume we have hybrid search, and we want to combine multiple search techniques, and we need to somehow combine them into a meaningful final result. How do we do that? And then oftentimes the, the thing people want to do is uh, is to normalize scores. Who has had bad experiences trying to normalize scores in the past? That's quite a few. Um, that also leads me to one of my favorite pages from, from Solar, uh, which is the scores as percentages page. I'm not sure if you're familiar with for a long time to come up with scores as percentages um, and say something is a 100% match and something is a 50% match. And the documentation is very clear. Don't do this seriously. This is going to go very poorly because it just doesn't work. Um, so the question is why? Anybody wants to volunteer and explain why this is a very bad idea or why this goes wrong? Yeah, it's a never ending battle. That, that's a very good point. Um, I have a, ah, sorry, I have a, a small example to actually show that. Um, and yes, the, the examples that we'll use is around RUM. So we'll use, I prefer RUM, um, but why is the RUM gone? Why is the RUM always gone? So these will be the, the search examples that we'll use and why... So, I assume this is large enough for everybody to see. Cool. Um, let me, I'm connected. I don't have that index. That's good. Let me store my three documents with, I prefer RAM, but why is the RAM gone? Why is the RAM always gone? So, when I search this, let's say our search phrase is, why is the RAM always gone? And... This is pretty close to both this one and this one. So you can see that the scores we have is 2.76. Remember this one as the, the top score and then, uh, but why is the RAM gone 1.8, whatever. We could assume that this max score here is the 100% result, right? And everybody would kind of say like, probably this is 100%. Now, what happens if you say you delete that document? with the highest score, the max score. And then you run that search again, and then suddenly instead of 2.76, whatever, um, we only have this result, which is 1.86. Is this now the new 100% match? Or is this only like, a, I don't know, 65% match or whatever the, the percentage here is? Okay, so, so we would do 100% again, okay. Um, what if I add another document? The RAM is gone. Why is the RAM always gone? How will this one score in comparison to the very first query? Yeah, that one should be even higher because um, we have um, RAM at least twice and we hit all the others. And I hope the refresh already happened. But yeah, you see that the score now is 299. So again, now we are like at the 108% match if we use the original query as the 100%. So trying to have these percentages is just a never-ending game to catch up because the underlying documents normally change. 
And if you have any uh, any changes in the, the underlying documents, this is a moving target and you will never reach or hit that. So this is a very bad idea and you should not do that. And people have been trying and have not been very successful with that. So we've seen these. Um, so this is a very bad approach, but everybody has heard of that and we're trying not to use that anymore, right? Um, so what is the next solution? Boosting. Um, why might boosting not be so great when we have multiple techniques and we try to manually boost them to kind of adjust? Yeah? Anybody? Yeah, so in the end, depending on the, the queries and the data set that you have, maybe you have some experience at some point and know that this is approximately where my scores will be, maybe until they totally change again. Um, but then it's more experience-based than based on the data set and queries that you have been running. And it's a moving target and it's not very accurate. Um, and as the pirates would say, um, it's more like a guideline than an actual rule of how to do that with boosting. Um, so you could put it together like that, but that's probably not the, the best approach. So another approach that is relatively simple would be max-min scale. Um, you basically take the score of each technique, um, just put it from into a range of 0 to 1, and adjust it like that. Simplistic, but potentially oversimplistic and doesn't get you the full value of how you could get across techniques. Um, and that leads us to RRF. Um, the original paper, I think, is from 2009, um, where they describe how reciprocal rank fusion outperforms uh, however you pronounce this, and individual rank learning methods. Um, and this is a great paper because it has only two pages. So this is a paper that even I could read um, and that was relatively easy to understand. Um, and I think that's part of why uh, RRF is getting popular because it's one that is relatively easy to follow along. So how does RRF work or behave? Um, first off, we generate the ranking for each technique that we are using. So we run our keyword search, we run our vector search, we run our text expansion or whatever else we have, um, or any combination of these. It could be two different keyword searches that we want to, to combine. Whatever we want to combine the different techniques, we do run those. The second step is we calculate the reciprocal rank. So within one technique, we take the first ranked item, everything is index based one here and not zero for a change. Um, so we take the first one and it's one divided by one. The second one would have the rank one divided by two, the third one, one divided by three, et cetera. So you basically rank or have this reciprocal rank within each technique, uh, one divided by the position where it is sitting at. Um, there's an optional extension that is not in the original paper that you could weigh the, the different ranking techniques. So for example, if you're more confident in one specific um, technique, for example, you want to rank your keyword search higher than your vector search or the other way around, um, you could include that weight uh, per method um, and just adjust that. And then if you throw all of that together, um, you sum the weights of the different reciprocal ranks for each item. Normally, those would be documents, but it doesn't have to be documents. This works for any type of item or list that you have. Um, you sum up the reciprocal ranks for each item that you're ranking, um, which leaves us with this small function. Um, so we have the reciprocal rank fusion score for item, document, whatever you have here, I. And then we have the number of rankings is J, which goes from one to the number of rankings. So for example, if you have two, you will have a sum of two different pieces. Um, this W here is the, the optional weight assigned to that J's ranking technique. So for example, if you want to have the the keyword search uh, ranked higher, you could have a higher weight for that one. But again, this is optional and not part of the original paper. And then you multiply that. 
I'll just try to stop moving. Um, you multiply that by one divided by the rank of item in the J ranking. So this is the one divided by one, one divided by two, whatever, plus a ranking constant, which the original paper tried multiple values out. Um, they default to 60 because they said that this is approximately the, the optimal value that they found. Um, and in the paper, you can kind of like see a distribution of how they, they found that. Um, two things for that. First, um, selecting that K value. It's basically how much influence uh, documents in individual rankings have over the final result. The higher the value, the more influence uh, uh, lower rank documents have. So you can basically tie like how, how that parameter can be tuned. Um, and you can try it out to see um, how that plays out with different rank functions. But the default in most systems is 60. The original paper has 60. And most people, I think, are sticking to 60 um, for that. The other side effect of that, of course, is if you have like a final result set of n, you will need to have more sub-results per technique um, to actually properly blend them together. Um, and that is normally called the window size. Um, so let's say we want to have the top 10 documents or results for something, then we might do the top 100 results for each technique to blend those together. Together, That is obviously a bit of an overhead that we have multiple sub-results for larger sets that we need to blend together. Um, but that is the, the trade-off of our F2 to combine that. So far, so good. Any questions? Or everybody still with me? Kind of? OK. Um, and at the end, you just sort by the highest uh, reciprocal rank fusion score. So there is a number coming out of this calculation at the end, and you just sort by that. So that's the, the, the score that you can use then. Um, which, to make this a bit more concrete, let's do an example. We have. Um, we have different rankings for different techniques. So we are using BM25 match. Then we have, let's say, BM25 with a boost. And then we are, ELSER is like a text expansion that we have. It could be any uh, vector search or whatever the three techniques, it doesn't really matter. Part of this point here is that it could be two different BM25s blended together or two vector searches blended together. Um, it's really any combination that you could think of that you could take. And then you have for this technique, you have this ranking of documents. So two, three, four, one, uh, sorry, two, three, five, one, four. For this one, a different one, et cetera. So these are the rankings for each of the, the three techniques um, that I want to blend here. Um, then we calculate the position that document one had um, in each ranking. So let's see, document one was at position OK, I'm not supposed to do that. Do I need to jump to reactivate it, or? <laughs> OK. <laughs> um, so I'll, I'll try to do this from here. So document one, I uh, had position four here, position four here, and uh, position five here. And if I didn't make any mistakes, you have one divided by four, one divided by four, plus one divided by five. And if I calculated that correctly, it's 0 0.7. And then you do the same thing for all the other documents that you have in your ranking. Um, you get the sums out, you take the highest, or you sort by that sum, and that's the, the position in the final blended result that you have. That's all there is to RRF. So far, so simple. Um, it's, I think we generally use the term blended. It's not normalized because we don't normalize the scores across the different uh, methods, but it's really blending the, the position within each working together. Um, that's kind of like the main gist of that. It also has a couple of nice um, advantages. Um, it does not require any training. Doesn't matter what technique you use, how you combine it, how many. Um, there is no training involved in this. It's very simple. Um, search generally seems to be doing well on 
stupid but fast or stupid but scalable and rf seems to be also falling in into that it's like bm25 always sounds kind of simplistic but it works amazingly well for that and the same i think is true for rf that it's re relatively simple to calculate and to understand um yet it is very efficient um and uh this is the previous one and this these are quotes from the original paper uh, and in the comparisons, at least when they brought out the paper, they were beating pretty much any other way um, to combine results. Um, that was their takeaway. Um, so it's either madness or brilliance, um, but let's say that RF is more around the brilliance side. Um, this is, by the way, um, rank fusion is not limited to RRF, but there are different algorithms and approaches. Um, uh, there is another paper um, from 2017 that describes all, all of those together and compares them. The differences don't seem to be huge. Um, RRF, I think, is the most widely used one of these. Um, if you're interested in the finer details, the table has a better description, um, though that wouldn't be readable here, um, about the differences in, in all of them. Um, so it's the risk reward of uh, and trade-offs in the rank fusions that you could have, but RRF is the, the most widely used one. Um, and RRF is used in various systems for sure Elasticsearch. I think VDB8 has it, um, Azure Cognitive Search has it. Um, I'm not sure if I'm missing others, uh, or you could just build it yourself uh, relatively easily depending on what scripting functions you have in different systems. Um, so, Let's give this a shot or let's take a look how we're doing in here. Just to have something visual and then we'll actually run a couple of, of queries um, manually as well. So I wanted to search for, so I'm, I have movies again. I think I wanted to search for the matrix. What is the expect expectation for matrix? Probably it's going to be pretty, um, pretty much the same between BM25 and some smarter way because matrix is a pretty much direct hit for all of those. Um, you can see mine variations in ranking. Um, so I don't know. So these have changed places, um, but classic BM25 and any other smarter way um, will work really well. Um, you can blend them with RRF, but um, the difference, okay, they get a bit more similar but the difference is not huge here. Um, where it gets more interesting is if I'm interested kind of like in the, the concept of things. Um, let's deactivate that again. And I think I wanted to search for a superhero where the, the differences will be a bit bigger. So for example, here um, we have the, the combat wombat, um, whatever that was. Um, and then you have superhero movies, uh, but you can see here that when superhero is trying to be a bit more of a concept, um, there is a large difference in the, the results that you ca can get. When we try to blend them, they do get a bit more similar and superhero as a term moves up a bit more. Um, it will get even uh, more confusing if we do something like animated superhero and then the the differences are getting even larger and these ones um, are better because a lot of these are not actually animated because it didn't extract that correctly um, now we could blend those again um, and then they're getting a bit more similar because of the keyword matches um, but that's all there is to it it Let's look at what is actually happening under the, the hood. And I I have made this simpler than it is or was um, in the full application. Um, let me see what we have here. So this is the Elasticsearch syntax. Um, I'm not sure if I, I can get closer or if it will die again. But just to give you the idea how, how the syntax potentially looks like, we would have, for example, here we have a query. We're searching for pirates in movie quotes, and then we have some vector representation of that. And then we blend them together with RRF. Um, 
how many sub results are we um, generating for uh, the vector search here? Here we're taking the top 50. How many sub results do we uh, calculate for the query? Anybody knows or any guesses? This one, um, because the window size is set to 50, we'll also do 50 here. So this is taking the top 50 here, the top 50 here. Then it runs uh, the RRF on both of them. How many results do we get out at the very end of this? Sorry? Mm -hmm. So this requires Elasticsearch knowledge. The default is 10. Since I didn't specify a size, um, the output will still be the default of 10 documents. So we calculated 50 sub results here, 50 sub results here. We blended them together into the, to the top 50 combined, basically. Uh, but then we return only the top 10 documents uh, overall. So you don't need to specify the, the size on this one or the size on that one. Um, if you, by the way, set the size or a case smaller than the window size, um, I think we'll automatically increase it to the window size um, because otherwise it wouldn't make any sense. So it will override some values automatically for you there. Um, let's do a, a full minimal example. Let me delete that again. This will be very simple. Um, but just to walk through the steps as a, a recap, recap to some degree. So we have a text field. We have a dense vector with one dimension because this one will be very easy to calculate in your head. Not that it makes much sense, but it will be easier to calculate. Um, and then I also have an integer um, because at the end we'll run an aggregation on top of the search results. So you can use RRF to pre-compute whatever you want, including aggregations, and you can still work on top of those, um, which is actually quite nice. So I create my mapping. I have, I think, five documents. So we have the text RRF. Uh, I give up on pronouncing these twice, three times, and four times. And the fifth one doesn't have the text field at all. And then we have our vectors, which are five, four, three. Um, this one doesn't have a vector, and this has the vector zero. And then we have this integer. This is what we will do an aggregation on at the end. Um, so let me store those five documents. One, two, three, four, five. Looks like we got those. And then I'm running my, my query before, and we'll actually break out the different parts afterwards to see, again, how it works. So I'm searching for the text RRF. Um, I am calculating the closest vectors to the vector 3 here. Um, I want or I take the top 5 together, but I'm only returning the top 3 documents from what I've calculated here. These top three documents, then I will aggregate to that together in a term segregation on that integer field. Um, I think we only had one and two. So basically, it will be an aggregation on two output values at the very end. So when I run that, we'll get um, the top three documents based on the RRF uh, blending. And then we aggregate them together so that key one has a couple of results and the key two has a couple of other results. But let's look at the individual steps again before we, we dive into the final result. So first off, we run the just a search for RRF. And unsurprisingly, the one with the most RRFs is ranked the highest, and with the fewer RRFs is ranked lower. If we do the vector search, and we are using or looking for the vector 3, one-dimensional vectors are almost weird, but um, you can see that the vector three is the closest one. Um, then we have four, um, five, uh, and then zero. So these are the closest vectors. So how these are combined, and let me hide this one again. What we got here is for the document one, um, for the query, uh, we got uh, uh, one divided by one plus four because we had, or oh, let me run this here again. So we have the rank constant that we set to one here. That's where this one 
OnePlus is coming from. Um, one other thing that I have failed to mention here, um, the max score is null. Does that make sense for everybody? Or are you surprised that the max score is null? So we, we have the scores for the individual techniques, but since we only have the ranking afterwards, there is no score anymore. It's only ranked according to the, the kind of like the final sum that we calculate, but there is no score anymore. That's why the, the score will always be, be null. So for every, every result that you have when you blend it with RRF, the score will be null. That is one thing that keeps throwing off people or um, cause confusion. It will just be um, sorted correctly based on how RRF calculates the outputs. I would need to dig up the conversation why we are not doing that. Uh, I, I don't know why. I just know that this is the way it's behaving and that is what we expect. Um, and I, I learned the hard way when I was looking for the scores that it doesn't work like that. Like that. Uh, but I'll need to dig into why we're not returning those scores here. Okay. I'll move this up a bit so it's easier to read. Yeah, that, that, this it is what the, the K that is default 60, we just added or made it one here to make the calculation even easier. Um, and based on based on that the K value, you can basically push like higher or lower values um, up or down depending on from one technique, how much influence one lower ranking from one technique has. That's kind of like the K of how to influence that. Y yeah. So the, this was the final calculation. These are the scores. These are how they, they are sorted and calculated. This part is clear, or should I go into that again? It's clear? Good? OK, cool. So that was kind of like how RF worked. The, the 1 plus was the K, and then it's the, the rank for each individual metric. Then we calculate the score. We sort by the score. We're done. So so much for RRF. So um, that is probably the point where everybody is like parley from RRF, and we've had enough of that. Um, so let's um, wrap that up. Why is RRF great? It gives you good results. We can always argue like how good, but relatively good in comparison to other methods. Um, it is easy to understand and calculate uh, and scales pretty well. And it does not need any tuning for the searches that you have or the data that you have. So it is just working out of the box without much magic. Um, before I go, I wanted to show you um, one more thing because I found it pretty cool. Um, has anybody seen RankQuest from Jill? He, he's based in Berlin. Unfortunately, he couldn't make it. Um, he showed it last week at the Elastic Meetup uh, here in Berlin for the first time. Um, just to give you a quick idea, because this is basically once once you start working with ranking, you want to check out how well stuff uh, scores. It works with Elasticsearch um, or any REST API, which is pretty cool. And it has demo content loaded in here. Um, so for example, it could add movies. I can use that movie database. I can define my search. For example, I've, yeah, I think I've searched for pirates before here. Um, and let's say we want to have the, the top 10 ones. Um, we search for that. I add this as a test case. In my test cases, then I have these two queries. Um, and I can look at the results for these. I could change the ranking like this is expected or not expected. And then it has metrics built in to run against these test cases to tell you how well you're doing on different precision and recall values. Not really re related to RRF, but as you're tuning your search results, you probably want a tool like this. And I just because it came out very recently and I found it pretty cool, I wanted to quickly show it here. Uh, so for example, here, um, it shows you for precision at K, um, the rating that you have defined in the search case um, is calculated. And then it tells you how well you're doing out the different uh, calculations and you could add your own as well. 
And this is just using local storage. You can then back it up into code and put it in a GitHub repository or in a Git repository because it just spits out JSON files and then you can carry it around like that. Um, it's very new, um, but I, I think that this was actually pretty cool and helpful once you try to dive into um, the scoring like RRF. And with that, questions. Should I repeat them or you will repeat them? Firstly, I think a round of applause for Philip. So uh, thank you, Philip. Yeah, we're going to go to questions. We have quite a few online, but I'm just going to come to some of the people who, uh, you, sir, because you had a question. Uh, so there is a, a, a debate in the industry whether um, uh, uh, filtering before uh, vector uh, uh, search or filtering after uh, vector search. And you introduce um, another method that uh, goes both way in uh, parallel and then merging the result. Uh, can you say a few words uh, related to the other uh, methods? The things that we have been doing there, so. And do you support the other methods? I mean, we, you, you have to, so. I think for performance, you probably want pre-filtering um, to exclude things uh, beforehand. Um, there was a discussion about correctness that you might filter out things um, too early. And then your result set, like your, your users are, are looking for the top 10 results, uh, but you filter too early and then it's kind of like mapping to the, the same results and then you get just five out. That might be very confusing for your users and, and unexpected. Um, so I think depending on where you filter, um, and I think that was specifically related to chunking, for example, where how early we do the filtering, um, that, that it might affect the correctness for that. Does that kind of answer the question? Yes, you mean that, that we do, for example, uh, 100 sub results for the top 10 results yeah, and then yeah, we go wider, yeah. yes. You, that is the overhead price that you will have to pay. Okay. Thank you. So we're going to go to an online question. Uh, Sebastian says, how do you weight different results? Some things have clearly more important than others. I'm not quite sure I understand the question myself, but. I mean, maybe if one algorithm is, is more important than the other, there was this optional weighing though. I don't think we support that today, that you would have this, this W parameter that you could say, I don't know, let's say the keyword search was more important than the others, then, then you could weigh that differently. That would be my only idea. Otherwise, it's it's not about the score, it's just it's about the, the position and or ranking within each search technique. Okay, Sebastian, I hope that answers your question. Um, actually, Joe, I think you were first. Do I want to answer that? <laughs> Thank you, Philip, for a great talk. Uh, I have a technical question on, uh, so you have to obtain two or multiple different orderings, right? Uh, which is turned into a separate query, right? I understand like a nearest neighbor search query or and a term match query. Uh, are those executed in parallel or are you doing them sequentially? Do you know? I, so my hope is that we do parallelize them since by now K, even KNN is parallelized, uh, though I am, um, let me double check before I say something stupid. Thank you. Okay, uh, we have another question online from Ludo. Um, would we use zero as reciprocal rank if an item is not returned by one of the search methods in its window? Yes, um, so here, it was not in the top N and then it just didn't. You'll have to jump up and down again. So this one didn't make the top three here and here it just didn't exist. I hope that answers the question. Okay, one more from the room. Um, I think, come to this gentleman here. Hi, Philip. thank you for the talk. Um, I wanted to ask, so we were running this query against the same index, like uh, query and KNN, 
is it possible to do it in the same operation to run uh, queries against two different indices, which might include some similar data um, and then blend it in like not from a single, but from two indices into one set of results? Mm, I mean, not that I would have tried that, but I guess, so how, how you generally do the elastic search is like, um, if you do comma, then you can run this query against multiple indices, or you could even use a wildcard. Um, so if you have a pattern, and then I think it should do the right thing. Though I would need to try that, or you try it out, but this is how I would approach it. Uh, so you can either provide a list or a wildcard, and then that should run against different ones. And maybe if you have, for example, a, a filter in different conditions, it could come from different indices. Um, or maybe the, the data is just uh, there in different indices and you will not have a match from every index anyway, and then you will blend from different indices together. So what yes. are the, if the queries you, you, are different? You basically, you, so you target different indices and then um, you have a query against a field that only exists in one index and you have, I don't know, a KNN against that. So you will you would potentially need to have disjoint fields that you query on because then, then you could blend them together. Not that I would have tried that out, but that's what I would try first uh, to see if that works. Almost sounds like a, a meta search. Um, interesting. Okay, so we're going to have one more question from the uh, online. Um, Haydar says, do you have any plan or ongoing work to support explain for RRF? So I, I always want to say, I'm sure there's a GitHub issue, but we have a lot of GitHub issues, um, um, which is not much of an answer. Um, if there is none, please open one. Um, yes, we should. I I can't swear on it, but I thought I, I've seen a discussion on that actually. Um, so I, I think there is one, um, but we might want to double check. Um, but we have today, I don't know, we, we, we can check. Uh, thank you. So we have um, we have just a few issues, um, and I cannot type anymore. I'm. Okay, so let's. No, that, I think we'll need to open another one. So okay. we, we'll get to 4,000 issues or so, but um, no guarantees when they get resolved, though. Okay, we're going to close it there. There's been a lot of questions. There's a lot of questions online, but Philip will, will be around and Today you can always tomorrow. ask on uh, relevant Slack, of course, where he's uh, very active. So thank you again, Philip Cren. Thanks a lot.